I think I'm gonna hit my head. Let's see if I can sit up here without doing it. Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah! Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV with some updated footage for you in the 21 RBSS uh, North Trail by Heartland right here. This was a very popular model last year and uh, we had a lot of comments come in and I really think North Trail did a really good job of taking as many of those comments as they could and improving this product based on your feedback and giving you the input that you're looking for. They've, um, they've rec I'm not gonna tell you it's perfect. It's not necessarily a problem free philosophy Hakuna Matata that works for every single person. But I think this one, if what you're looking for is big trailer features, but in a really small, lighter weight towing size, they have packed a ton of content feature into this, like starting right up front with that uh, ginormous 72 by 80 king bed that you could always swap out for a true queen if you're so inclined. This also is very rare with true two inch sidewalls. They're using Asdell. They uh, listened to you and they did some level of solar prep this year. We're gonna expand on that as we go. They gave us a way to be able to potentially get up to the roof that they lacked uh, last year. And we will dive in a little bit later and see if it's going to still be a little bit of a Henry headbanger, uh, headbanger there, I can't talk. If you remember last year, uh, I about knocked myself out trying to sit up on the bed in this one. We're gonna see if they fix that part too. This is also one of the shortest, smallest, and lightest travel trailers I've ever seen with wide stance stability axles, which really significantly improves your uh, ride and handling. They've got a huge front storage compartment. It is carpetless, uh, even in the slide, it's ventless. And they really kind of, some people want a theater seat. Some people want a hide a bed. Some people want a dinette or a dinofa. And they kind of went, yes, we will do all of that with one thing. And I want to show you how all that works in case you're not familiar with this model. Like I said, it's got a couple cool things. It's got a couple downsides. It's got great travel access. The bathroom elbow room might be a little bit tight if you're a person of stature, we'll say. But I want to give you the good with the bad and let you make the best and most educated decisions. And if you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's hop inside and see what she does have to offer. And I thought I would start this one a little bit differently by beginning our main video in road mode with the slides closed. Logically, when you get there, this is what it's uh, going to look like. And really what we're simulating here is if you made an overnight stayover and you wake up in bed and you're looking toward the back of the RV, that is what we're looking at right now. Because you can notice the entry door is over here on the left. Uh, the refrigerator is right behind the bathroom door over here. So if you walk in the door, you can grab something from the fridge, whether you're at your destination or if you're on the road. And there is absolutely nothing stopping you from getting over here uh, into the bathroom for a quick little, you know, emergency travel potty stop or something like that. We're going to come back and see all this in far more detail. But I kind of thought I would uh, give you a little look at what she might look like either in storage or... You know, if you pull over to that Cracker Barrel or Walmart parking lot, what is nice is like you see, you can still have full use of the bed. Basically everything but the sofa for seating is good to go. Now all opened up in here, we have some big RV content in some small RV space, but they, I, I just really think they're nailing a lot of the big stuff. Like we're carpetless, we're ventless, we're easy cleaning, we're pet friendly. Um, and you notice they're using, it's not truly a floor flush slide, but it's a lot closer. And what it allows them to do is put like a full size sofa in there. And that is what will uh, allow that sofa to have like a little sort of foot kick out uh, ability. Um, even some guest sleeping that a, uh, a jackknife sofa in a lot of similarly sized RVs will not have. Now, I'm a big fan of any time I can get some kind of shoe garage. I'm open to input and opinions here. Like, I'm of mixed emotions. It's open-faced, which is great, but it's kind of just, like, facing into the living room. And uh, I, I feel like I could still kind of see a bunch of the clutter there. I don't know how in love with that concept I am. And you you might like this, you might not, but some people really love the fact that that's a 72 by 80 king bed in a short, small RV. This is, uh, there's a lot of aspects of this RV that are real big person friendly. The bathroom can be a little bit of a trick though. So we're gonna make sure that we tune in on that portion. What is interesting though, if you look down below, you notice how the, the bed base where that like shoe garage is located, how it's not nearly as wide as the mattress. The bed base is queen sized. So if you do prefer a queen bed, 
it's very simple. All you do is just swap out the mattress for the true queen of your choice and call it macaroni. Now, uh, last year, they had USB plugs around the bed, but nobody really knew they were there, and frankly, the location of them was not ideal. The USB plugs uh, were actually located on these overhead light fixtures, which meant you had to dangle a USB cord down. And I don't know if you noticed this, but the, the side stands are pretty far away. By the way, I'm going to give them points here for using a radius edge on that hanging wardrobe tower right next to the bed, so it's not a shoulder stabber, which is nice. And for a second, I thought, oh, they don't have USB plugs this year. And then I looked a little bit more closely, and turns out, uh, yes, they do. They have USB and household. Now, they didn't kill themselves. They've got one USB on both sides of the bed, but I do you need more than that? I, I mean, I could always put some kind of split or something on there. One other thing, uh, back it up over here right by the entry door. It doesn't have, like, a full command center. It just has these... Uh, things known as switches that for some reason they just keep working, you know, um, older I get the, the more I'm like almost against more tech. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting grouchy, but I'm like the Clint Eastwood of millennials. Uh, I'm, I'm like grouchy, you know, anyway, um, this right here, USB plug. But why though? Like why, I, why is it here? That's the thing I don't really, what would you do with it? I don't know. Anyway. Up top here, uh, you've got a, a more powerful 15,000 BTU centrally ducted air. And one of the other things on these, very similar to like Rockwood and Flagstaff or something like that, they have a laminated roof structure uh, to help keep the, uh, you know, the, the heat out of the thing uh, uh, effectively. We're going to come back and see all the bedroom storage and extra details in a little bit. One of the things you could call it, uh, smart design, or you could call it corner cutting and cost control or whatever you want to call it. The fact is there's, there's a lot of things in this RV that it preps for. Like they are ready to throw a TV up there. They are ready for solar. They're ready for a ladder. They don't actually do any of those things. They let you decide how important that is to you. Now that does mean that the price tags on these are generally more aggressive, and it also means that you may need to spend some extra money in addition to the purchase of your RV's price tag to fully outfit it the way that you want. The argument that some people will make, I like those blackout roller shades right there, but the argument that some people might make is, sure, it, uh, you know, it, it costs uh, a little less up front, but even with a couple specific upfits and upgrades that I want, it still saved me a pretty penny over the luxury fully loaded glam series that I was also looking at. And there's no right or wrong answer to that. It's just a matter of which one kind of works for you. Now, compared to last year, they have lightened and softened up the decor a great deal. These were a little bit bitey and aggressive. They've swapped over to a solid surface countertop um, the, I mean, the only thing this one doesn't do extremely well, really, for a small RV is giving us campsite window coverage. If we sit down at the sofa, though, you, you would have, you know, your bedroom window, your kitchen window, and the window in your entry door. And I kind of wonder, you know, with all the open sidewall action that they have right here, should they be including another window? Although that may put a window just behind our stovetop, which could be a grease splatter magnet. So I don't know, is that the right decision? Is that the wrong decision? You folks tell me. And this is an RV industry first. They are doing air fryer ovens now, which is very cool. Heartland's doing a lot of that, and I think you're going to see more and more of that across the RV industry. I'll get you a look at that in uh, a little bit here. Now they're doing a, uh, a big farm sink. They don't include any kind of sink cover, but they're ready for that kind of stuff. A sink cover's a fairly easy thing to be able to sort out. And they have gone exclusively 12-volt compressor fridge. Uh, that is something that is going to start happening more and more and more. Uh, I, uh, basically, gas electric two-way suppliers, one of them kind of quit, and the other one made themselves very expensive. So suddenly, 12-volt refrigerators became the, the, the smart option for a lot of people. Um, and whether we like it or not, that is just a thing that is happening. There's some smart little details over here too. Like if you look in the uh, the side of that slide box, you see a light switch for the uh, the light that's all the way at the top of the slide box. The two other lights that you see in the slide box, it's nice that they really lit it up over there so you can see what you're doing. Those you can reach when you're sitting on the sofa, however. Now, uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of questions and they don't really do a lot of other seating swaptions. We might be able to custom order and request a theater seat in this RV, 
But um, this one has a little bit of a workaround for that. You might like it, you might not, but we're going to see that in just a second. One of the things here, they have some nice storage overhead in this, uh, the slide, but if you notice, it's what I call the auto-close yeah, gravity yeah, variety yeah, because yeah. it doesn't actually uh, hold itself open. There's no sort of gas strut or anything. You'll see the same thing again above the bed, and based on my hand gestures, uh, you can tell how I kind of feel about that. Now, that sofa, I'm going to call it the do-it-all Dinofa, the Swiss Army sofa. Um, you know, it's it's a jackknife sofa that has a, a big foot chest extension with an extra cushion in it that can open up into a sleeper. You saw there's a free-floating uh, folding leg table included with the RV. Um, and it is very sheer. It is very thin. But I do appreciate that they did give us a privacy curtain. If you if you scroll back in the video, though, you may notice where uh, there's, there's actually two fabric holdbacks for that privacy curtain. One is right next to the slide out. I don't recommend using that because if one of those curtains accidentally gets uh, pulled into that slide out, you might not realize it. And it may allow water to wick in through exposed fabric outside the RV if it's raining and basically create your own leak. Uh, which is the opposite of what you want. So I would never recommend putting that curtain over on the poop side of the camper, basically. And I saw there the air fryer oven, giving you a look at all the storage. Um, you know, it's got a couple drawers. Not a ton of drawers, but it's not a giant RV. I think it's got enough drawer coverage. I like the dedicated pantry space. Overall, in terms of kitchen storage, I think it's pretty great. If there's one little thing I think they maybe could easily win and do better on, it's that if you look where there's this big boxy space where your TV could mount, that's a big chunk of wasted air, man. Like, there's got to be some kind of storage potential or some better function they could have done with that. Now, as long as I'm laying down here, I'm going to point you almost straight up. So don't be, you know, if you're motion sick, you might want to keep that in mind. I'm going to go slow. This is just a vent above us, uh, it, it, you know, like a, basically a glorified skylight with some airflow capacity. It doesn't have any sort of power uh, run to it, so it's not really fan capable. And with this being a laminated roof, running wiring through that is uh, a, a trickier thing than it would be in a lot of other roof structures. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, uh, moving back to the bathroom, smart content. A locking bathroom door is the simplest, stupidest, smartest thing. And sometimes it's that peace of mind and privacy you need. Especially when, if you notice, they are doing a little bit of the peekaboo, I smell you kind of bathroom door on this one. Now, the toilet space here. This is a little bit of a trick. If you're left-handed and you open the shower, you're fine. If you're right-handed, you're going to have to open the shower and lean over to uh, be able to apply the butt napkins, as it were, over here. And uh, I'm not trying to be gross about that. I'm trying to be realistic and help you understand if this is or is not the right RV for you, you know? Showing you, I, I like that extra uh, linen storage they have, and it's not open face storage. Even though this is an RV that is um, smartly budget sensitive in a lot of ways, they still found a way to do doors on their storage, and it's amazing how many more expensive brands do not. We do have only the basic fan here because they don't tend to overdo a whole heck of a lot. Um, the, uh, the shower headroom is fine for some, for, you know, I'm a little over six foot tall. I stood in that shower just fine. Once again, though, elbow room could be a horse of a different color. By the way, if you watch The Wizard of Oz, um, there's a scene at, uh, where there's a horse hooked up to a carriage and the guy says, wow, that's a horse of a different color. You can see the horse licking its lips and you notice how the horse changed color like uh, every scene, that's because they basically smeared the horse with like jello powder and a little bit of water to give it that sort of color. And the horse is like, mm, 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 I like uh, I like that kind of stuff, which I think is exactly what the horse said in the uh, the DVD uh, after party notes, uh, if, if I recall correctly. Now, one major thing to talk about here, when you hear a lot of laminated RV talk, you hear a lot of things about laminated floors. This does not use a laminated floor. Some people get spooked by laminated floors worrying about potential soft spots, which is a thing that has really plagued the RV industry in the past. This is a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor deck with aluminum uh, 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 joists going through, uh, packed with insulation. The underbelly is forced air heated and enclosed, by the way. Let's take a look at the towing specs here. I think this is something that very nicely falls into the category of potentially half-ton towable. Uh, a lot of people will shop it based on the dry weight, but one of the things that I think is absolutely outstanding on this, to the point of some people may argue it's overkill, is that 
huge cargo carrying capacity that you find on this model right here. And it's long been my experience. It's not a guarantee, but I see personally a trend from my years of experience doing this. RVs with a higher cargo capacity tend to be RVs that stay out of the shop because the structure is not basically right at its strength limit uh, in what it's doing the entire time. It's, you know, it's got some, some extra giddy up available to it. Um, the, uh, you know, it's a standard eight foot wide, but again, you've got those uh, uh, wide stance stability axles and with this short length that we're looking at right here, this is going to be a nice and easy tower and goer. Now, maybe something to consider if you're going to do a lot of high mileage towing, um, these are import tires, and uh, there are a lot of people who feel better with things like uh, you know Goodyear tires or something of that nature. One of the things on these import tires that's really important is you really need to learn like what is your maximum speed rating with these tires. Some of these things are like 60, 65 miles an hour. So if you're towing 70, 75 miles an hour, which I never recommend you do when you're towing an RV, but people do it. We've all seen them on the highway. They're like, full sin, brother. I got a Ford Ranger. Get out the way. And um, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but you get the idea. Um, you know, if you keep your tires inflated properly, if you don't overdrive the tires speed wise, import tires should treat you just fine. But if you don't like that idea, you want some more peace of mind, you can always swap them out. North Trails run less than a lot of other brands, but you know, depending on what you want to add to it, like different tires, that may shift the budget for you. Now, I brought that table from inside out here to show you how big this storage compartment is. Uh, notice over on the left, this is something they added last year based on your input. First of all, I love that battery disconnect. If I'm going to be picky, I'd rather be Josh, but if I'm going to be picky, I would mount it up a little bit higher to get it away from shifting cargo. But last year, these had absolutely jack and squat for solar prep of any variety. This year, they've actually gone beyond um, you know solar prep and they are solar ready. And the difference there, what that means, solar prep means you still have to run a bunch of the wiring. Solar ready means you literally plug and play the solar panel of your choice if you even want solar. So I'd be kind of curious to know what you think about that. Now, the reason I've been floating around here for so long also is you notice how nicely finished and clean even the ceiling of that pass-through is? That's because that entire bed deck below you where you're sleeping, where your body is located, is laminated. Very similar to like the sidewalls, but again, not the floor. Um, the uh, the idea there is it's going to form a little bit of a, uh, a thermal barrier between you and the outside to help you stay more comfortable. Now, in that front pass-through, there was tire pressure, uh, TPMS prep, tire pressure monitoring prep. Uh, there was also lights on both sides of the pass-through. The awning is not amazing. It could be better, but they did give us a bedside breeze window and that huge pass-through compartment. You know, it just kind of, it sort of is what it is. One of those things sometimes, you, you you know, you might want it all and you might want it now, like Freddie Mercury, but we, uh, we can't get it all every single time necessarily. Now, uh, your entry door is a Miss Piggy anti-slam karate chop. Hiya! so that you don't uh, go slamming it against the side of the RV. And we do have ourselves, it is dangerously close to being a pro penis. If you weren't aware, uh, the very unofficial technical term, uh, when a gas grill quick connect comes out, you know, when the gas comes out the back side of the RV, well, that's a pro penis. But that right there coming off the side is a propane cooker hooker, uh, which is also nerdism number 37. And in case you're wondering why they're all number 37, it's a great question. Thanks for asking. I don't care for outside speakers. I'm kind of just like over them anymore. I don't think they sound great, uh, but they don't hurt anything, I guess, if they're just there, even if you don't use them. And that little uh, ladder mount right there made for one of those uh, telescopic portable ladders. That is something that these lacked entirely last year. Obviously, it still doesn't have a factory roof ladder, but at least they have given us a way if we want to, we could get up to the roof of this thing. Oh, that hurt. I just ran backwards walking directly into the fifth wheel hitch of a Cougar fifth wheel behind this thing because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that sucked. Anyway, um, a very, very rare quality on this one. A true two-inch sidewall. 
Inch and a half walls are the most common in laminated RVs. There are some one inch thick laminated walls out there. This is twice as thick on the side walls. I think that's a pretty big deal. Again, they got that fully walkable laminated roofing. They have that 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. And this is not made to be any sort of like mega off-road, off-grid camper. It doesn't have the world's biggest holding tank capacities. It doesn't have the most amazing clearance on the sewer outlet, but thankfully it is a single sewer outlet. And you see that we have uh, they, they don't put water hookups above the electrical hookups on this one. That doesn't necessarily bother me, but I do prefer it when they aren't like that. That big rectangle, by the way, is a full hot, cold outside utility shower, not just a cold water uh, sprayer port. Uh, backing up a little bit, something I like on these that is a very unsung quality in a lot of RVs, tinted windows. It helps keep the heat out and the nosy neighbors, obviously. Uh, and in case you are going to be, um, you know, if you're camping in an area that has like a lot of tree coverage that drops a lot of crap on top of your RV, uh, pine needles, whatnot, it is prepped and ready for a slide awning if that is something that you would like to apply. Now, this is another uh, more recent update. Very, very similar. If you're familiar with like Keystone or Crossroads, they have a, a thing called the Giggy Box. Heartland has the vault. Um, and I feel like when you say it, there should be some sort of like gong gong, like some sort of sound effect that goes along with it. But uh, almost like that sound that comes after the uh, intro of Law & Order SVU. Uh, I, though, when you know, you know. If, I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just ignore me. The Vault. But the Vault, what that thing does... It, these things used to have just this terrible bank of relays on the front that were exposed to weather and could cause um, electrical issues from time to time from weather exposure. The vault keeps that not only enclosed and protected, but it also acts as a true hard battery disconnect, eliminating parasitic load from the RV to the batteries when it is disconnected, which I think is pretty cool. So what do you think? I think... They did a pretty good job versus last year. Some folks uh, commented on the decor. Folks didn't like the lack of any roof access. Folks didn't like any sort of solar. And I think they really kind of shored up those edges. But it's not to say that this is the RV for everybody. There are certainly some options out there that might work better for other folks. This is a very popular layout, a very popular floor plan. And I will leave you some links in the video description, both to check pricing and availability on this one, as well as to, uh, to, to watch some full videos I've done of other people that make a layout very, very similar to this and let you decide which one works for you. And I'd be kind of curious, who do you think makes the very best version of this and where do they nail it and how could they improve it again next year? Let's see if we can't help them once again. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.